So the question is, how do you define a critical process based on the new process validation guidance? The new process validation guidance is a pretty significant change from the 1987 guidance that we've been using in the industry uh, for many years. The biggest difference has been they've redefined process validation rather than our famous three lots and we're done as really a continuous process. And they've taken this process and broken it up into three distinct stages. In stage one, we're supposed to be evaluating the process design. And by process design, I mean understanding the contribution of raw materials, uh, equipment, process parameters, in terms of process stability, but most importantly, in terms of product performance. So when we start thinking about what is a critical process, this is where we begin, at small scale, at development, when we're looking at those parameters within our process which can have an impact on our product's performance. If we find parameters that are important to the process stability, and that's important to know, because at the end of the day, we will have to put forth a control strategy that will make sense. But what we're really looking for are process parameters which have an impact on the product's performance. If we find parameters that do, these are parameters that are potentially considered critical process parameters. Now, there is no unified definition of critical process parameters that the FDA has put out, simply that these are parameters that are important to the product's performance. One definition, which we've used very successfully with the agency and with other processes that have been in development, has been to look at whether these parameters across our final proven acceptable range and normal operating range still have an impact on the product's performance. If they do, then we consider them critical process parameters. And we consider that a critical process within the overall drug manufacturing life cycle.